Hey guys, Rob here with eBuy Gaming, and today we're taking another look at the ROG Zephyrus GA502 gaming laptop. And we're going to be determining whether this is a viable option for a portable streaming setup. So for the price, this laptop has an impressive spec featuring a Ryzen 7 3750H processor, GTX 1660 Ti Max-Q and 16 gig of DDR4 memory. The standout feature to me is the graphics card and the functionality that that presents. The GTX 1660 features the newest version of Nvidia's NVENC encoder meaning you can stream your games through it with a great quality and minimal effect on your game performance. Now this is something that I use in my desktop PC for streaming but I've never had the chance to do it on a laptop and in the past obviously laptops can sometimes get quite hot and quite loud under load so I'm interested to see how it performs on this laptop for game streaming. The potential for a more portable game streaming setup could be great for users that travel a lot and still want to stream their games to an audience. So one of the biggest things you're going to want to consider when using a laptop for a portable streaming setup is your peripherals and connectivity. Obviously the key thing you're going to need is an ethernet cable to make sure you're connected up to the highest speed internet you can get. You're definitely not going to be able to stream over the Wi-Fi on the laptop so this is going to be a must have for your stream setup. So my goal with this setup was to try and keep wires to an absolute minimum. While I want it to work, I don't want it to be annoying to set up and look like a mess of tangled cables. The GA502 already has a great chiclet keyboard, so I've paired that up with a wireless mouse. Any wireless mouse would do the job and it just means there's one less cable coming out of the laptop when setting it up. The second thing I looked at was the webcam. So this laptop doesn't have a built-in webcam, so we've used a Logitech C922, which is going to utilize one of the USB ports. This worked well and does give you the flexibility to mount the camera wherever you like. It's definitely a point worth noting though, and I'd recommend having a small mini tripod alongside the webcam so that you can be completely flexible in where you mount it. For your microphone, there's three main options you could take. The first would be to use the built-in microphone on your webcam, but this may not have the best sound quality for your viewers. The second would be to buy a standalone microphone, but again, this is going to bulk up the size of your setup and further add to the weight. The third would be to buy a gaming headset that features a reliable and good quality microphone. This would be my preference as it helps to keep things portable and also gives you a decent sound stage for playing games. As I said at the start, a wired internet connection is a must have for streaming and the laptop features a gigabit ethernet port. So you'll need to make sure you have an ethernet cable with you as well to be able to utilize this. So once everything was set up, I started booting up some games and trying out streaming on the system. Okay, so this is a test using Destiny 2, uh, running the game at 720p, 30fps on the stream, but the in-game FPS for me as the player is uh, capped at 60. As you can see, it's actually a really playable experience. Uh, this game is much better optimised for this kind of stream. And uh, also obviously the headset, you will notice the microphone is picking up a little bit of background noise, but that's because I've turned off the gain on it and I'm using the audio jack connector. Um, if you wanted to get better quality out of your headset and microphone, then the best thing to do would be to have a USB connection, um, which this headset does support, but obviously I've tried to cut out as many USB devices as possible because the laptop is slightly limited, um, as most are with USB ports. But as you can see, this is a perfectly playable experience. Uh, it actually runs really nice and smooth. We'll jump into some actual first-person gameplay as well just to see how that is... Um, and I'll give you guys an idea of the quality. Okay, so we're now going to jump into some actual first person PvP gameplay. Uh, I've actually upgraded the stream to 60 FPS now, so we'll see how that performs and how much of an impact that has on game. So first impressions already, it feels really smooth. Uh, obviously it's limited to 60 FPS, but the 120Hz screen definitely helps with um, keeping it feeling nice and responsive. And the stream running at 720p 60fps doesn't really seem to have too much of an effect on the game. And I think ultimately that's what it's going to come down to. It's the kind of games that you're playing and the experience that you're after. If you're happy to limit your games to 60fps for the purpose of streaming and uh, you're not playing games that are too demanding on your CPU and GPU, then it's definitely going to be a viable option. Um, I can hear the laptop in the background again, 
but it's not getting too hot. The nice thing about this laptop is that even though the fans do ramp up, it's not so much of an annoying fan noise. Um, this game looks really nice actually running on this. I think we're running on medium settings. Obviously with the laptop screen you do get a nice pixel density at 15.6 inch 1080p. Um, it's a really nice quality panel actually. Now one of the other things that's worth considering is that obviously you're not going to have a uh, second monitor as such. Potentially if wherever you're staying has got a TV you could connect it up because the laptop does have a HDMI port on it. Um, But if you're looking to look at chat and your dashboard, the best way to do it is probably going to be to run the Twitch app through your phone. Um, you can access your dashboard there and you can see your chat and you can also see any new subscribers or notifications that you've received. Okay guys, so now we're going to give Battlefield 5 a test. I'm actually going to bring up the in-game FPS counter. So we can see once we get into the actual game, it does dip a little bit. We're down to sort of 45 FPS at the moment. We'll see if that goes up at all. Potentially going to go down once we start getting into the game. Let's move through here and see how the performance changes. So we are getting down to sort of 30 FPS. I haven't seen it go below 30, but it is on the line. We are losing ground in this 36. And this is running on low settings as well. So at 720p, it actually... pretty much stays the same. Um, it's definitely playable. You could definitely get away with it. Um, I think for sort of a casual battle session, if you just wanted to jump on for a bit and... You're more of a casual player and not like a competitive player um, you could get away with it but if you're looking to stream this as your sort of main game I'd say you'd want to be looking at like an RTX 2060 max view or potentially higher um, just to give you that kind of solid 60 FPS performance. So in Battlefield 5 we were able to stream at 720p 30 FPS but because of the load on the CPU the in-game performance did struggle a bit. With lower settings you could potentially optimize the game to run but it kind of gets to a point where you, you're sacrificing your own game experience for the purpose of the stream and ultimately it depends on what kind of streamer you are. But again, with Battlefield 5, it is probably the most intense game you could try and do on a laptop of this spec. We have to remember that this laptop spec is kind of like an entry to mid-range gaming laptop spec. So I think considering that and the price that you pay for it, it definitely didn't do too bad. So in conclusion, you definitely can use this laptop as a portable streaming setup. But you're really going to want to consider the kind of games that you're playing and what sort of FPS you want to play it at. The 1660 Ti does a great job of encoding, but in the more intense games you do start to see a hit in game performance, especially in Battlefield 5. In Destiny 2 and PUBG it was perfectly playable, and actually really enjoyed the experience. It's amazing to see how far gaming laptops have come, and I imagine as NVENC gets better, we're going to see even more better options for uh, portable gaming setups or portable streaming setups. There are other versions of this laptop that have higher spec graphics cards, so there's definitely options there. And with regards to the actual laptop itself, it's got all the ports you need for it. You want to heavily consider the peripherals you're going to use, so you want to make sure you've got you know, a decent headset with a good microphone, probably preferably a USB headset. Um, I'd say a wireless mouse is a really good way to go. Just using the keyboard that's built in on the laptop, um, for me it was perfectly fine, I quite like chiclet keyboards, but you could if you wanted to hook up another keyboard as well. So that's going to be it for this video guys, I hope you enjoyed this and if you did make sure you leave a like. If you've got any questions about this laptop then please let me know in the comments below. I'll put a link to the product page as well on our website so you can go and have a look at the actual spec on there. Overall, really impressed with the performance of this laptop. It's definitely a worthy option and a potential entry level option for a portable streaming setup. Other than that, I hope you guys have a great day and I will see you in the next video.